team kill tech. Hello and welcome to the director's commentary for Open Lobby Season 1, Episode 6, Ranked Lobby. Now, as you can see here, I'm wearing the most kawaii shirt that I could find uh, in my wardrobe. I got it as a gift from Jacob like a couple years ago. Uh, pretty cute. Uh, because uh, today uh, we're doing the anime episode. Um, probably my favorite episode of the first season just because it's... It's so out there and so ridiculous, um, and I really tried to parody, you know, like anime, like the anime style and tropes as as best as I could uh, using the Halo Three engine. Um, and I won't go on such a I won't go on too long of a tangent here. But before we begin, I just want to say something in terms of like the style of the episode. Um, so when I was coming up with the idea uh, for it. Um, initially I just came up with the idea of like, I want to do an episode where I'm just parodying an anime. I don't know what the context is, what it's going to involve. I know it's probably going to involve Banshee being like this super high level player. And then, you know, Zach and Jacob watch in awe. Right. So initially it was like, they were going to join his ranked lobby and they were going to join his team and they were going to be up against four elite level players. Right. But then I was like, no, because that, that'll just be like too much back and forth uh, and, and it might just get too complicated because there will be too many characters on screen at once. So I was like, let me just limit it to one player. And then I was like, oh, it's it would be great if it was a 1v1 between Banshee and this guy, but they're both using mods, right? Um, and that way I could have them like fly around and do all this like teleporting shit like an anime. And so that's how I kind of um, came up with the idea. Uh, was just like thinking about how it could work as like an anime episode. Like I said um, in all my other commentaries, this was the last uh, episode that I worked on for the season. Like two or three weeks before it was released, I hadn't written anything. I didn't record anything, nothing. I was just trying to, for the longest time, it was a running joke between me and Jacob. We were like, um, uh, I would I would mention episode six and I'd be like, I don't know if there's an episode six. Like I was I was honestly as the time was closing in on the episode's release date because I wanted to release them weekly. I was like, I might just have to scrap it and just, you know, call episode seven, you know, flipping out. i uh, call that episode six and then episode eight would be the finale or episode seven would be the finale. Right. Um, but I managed to come up with an idea that I think I, I did pretty well. And um Another thing that I was like co contemplating in the production was I only had three weeks, right? So initially I wanted to use like Source Filmmaker to get like some really dynamic um, animation sequences, like similar to stuff that you've seen in like Red versus Blue or like there was even there was even a uh, something that someone did in like Blender um, like a few months ago. It, it, it was a really cool um, Blender animation. And I was like, I want to do something like that for this episode. So I attempted to uh, use Source Filmmaker, but uh, I just, I I don't know. I just didn't feel comfortable using a program that I had very limited knowledge of already. And I would have to cram all the knowledge into like a couple of days just so I can... Um, get this machinima out and I was like, ah, but will the quality of the animation even be what I want it to be because it'll be so rushed. So I just sort of like scrapped that idea and I was just like, all right, I'm just going to stick with, um, the Halo three engine and the in-game assets and I'll use that. And that's what I did. I, I, because I've, uh, the base of where I film is, uh, I film using, um, OBS open broadcast software. I connect all my accounts via, a land so they all can join one game and I host the game on my PC so I'm able to access the theater mode of that game um, and like also access mods through the Steam Workshop so um, you know what I did for this episode is there are um, Steam Workshop mods if you go to the Halo um, Steam Workshop and there's like a bunch of green screen mods and like um, there's also a mod called I think it's Halo Alpha or whatever it basically it's essentially the the mod tool that every modder uses pretty much for like basic modding, like, um, you know, changing weapon projectiles and stuff like that. So you'll see that in this episode. Um, and I'll go more in depth on it, but, um, yeah, I just used, uh, what was available to me. It was pretty simple process. So it just took a lot of time, like, you know, in the editing stage, like really like, um, you know, with a lot of the, um, with keying out all the green screen and stuff like that, but I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that now. I think I've rambled on too much. 
let's just get into this. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> hey, Jacob, you down to play some ranked? Sure. What do you mean? Just us? Well, actually, Banshee invited us to his ranked lobby. And... Yeah, no. You know how much I hate playing with that kid. Oh, come on. It's not like it's going to mess with your rank. He's levels above us. That's the problem. His lobbies are filled with the sweatiest players I've ever seen. I don't even get to play the game. Last time we played with him, I was spawn killed like 10 times. The dude was jumping off of icicles. Like, what the fuck? Classic, um, you know, foreshadowing there. Because in the end, he does jump off the icicles. Um, also, don't know um, if it's really apparent. But you, again, you hear um, like ambient gunfire and grenade explosions in the background. Um, and I, I spaced them out periodically throughout this scene so that um, the soundscape isn't um, sort of the the soundscape isn't muddied as they're like talking and having like crucial dialogue exchanges. So I try to like space it out in between like what are the parts where it sounds appropriate that I that the audience doesn't really need to pay attention to this line and then like when a line really needs to be heightened I sort of or emphasized um I uh, I don't really have any audio in the back in the backing track just so that um you you get the sense that there's more players on the map playing um same technique I used in like episode 2 and 5 um but you get that sense of like that the map is full of players um even though there's only two players on screen uh and but the sounds aren't distracting enough from the conversation here i know i know it's stupid but come on one game won't hurt right i also really like i really liked shooting on um snowbound here like um you know snowbound gets a lot of shit for being a terrible map um just for like it's just not fun to play on um and yeah, well, that might be true. It's a very, like, beautiful map. Like, I really like um, Halo 3's, like, atmospheric, like, snowfall. And, um, like, I just love the look of Snowbound here. It's a really pretty map. <sighs> Whatever. Wait. I thought you hated playing with him, too. Why do you want to... No. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that cut there, to me, is just sort of... Um, it's, it's meant to not only put you in Jacob's head, like he's like piecing it together. Like, wait, why, why do you, why do you want to play with him? You know, like he's putting it together in his own head, but it's also, um, also a reaction shot to what Jacob is saying. It's like my character is uh, in my head. I don't know if anybody else sees this, but in my head, my character, like, um, in real life, not in the game, um, is sort of like being like doing like puppy dog eyes or whatever, like. You know, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, trying to just um, swoon Jacob into doing uh, his uh, sh following along and do and uh, following along with the uh, shenanigans. Yes. Why? What are you talking about? He promised you, didn't he? You made a deal with an eight-year-old. Really? <laughs> okay. Wait. Well, he's actually like nine, I think. I can't believe. And, and the stupidest thing about that line is like. <laughs> it's like my my character is trying to be ultra specific right and be like well he's actually like nine right like he's not eight um <laughs> and it's like like there's no reason for my character to be that to be that like specific on it and jacob is like sort of uh in this series or this season it kind of sounds like he's a bit ageist <laughs> Leave it. at the end of the day that's all that matters right the fucking easter eggs it's just one game one game, and then he said he'd help us do the elephant flip I was telling you about. Remember? No. <laughs> I don't remember, because I don't care. I was actually just having fun just playing the game for once. See, I, I like that. I like that shot. I don't know if it's just me, but I like the shot. I like the composition. I like how the 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 planet's in the center, that you have the sun on the left, and we're, we're pretty much both evenly um, spaced within the frame. It's just like a nice shot. Please, you know how crazy he can get in those lobbies? No one can stand a chance. The game will be over before you know it. We'll do the Easter. It's simple, but it's 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 like a it's a nice wide shot to cut to for like um a sort of like specific emphasis or like comedic 
um, cut to shot. Greg, real quick, and then we can do whatever you want. Yeah, sure. Please, 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 please. And this is a fucking dumb shit about this. Like, my character is, like, especially in this episode, is like, um, the youthful enthusiasm and the the youthful enthusiasm of my character is more arrogance and annoyance <laughs> like like um like i just wa- i always want to get my way like a child you know and and i'm i'm constantly pressuring jacob into um these situations that he just doesn't want to be involved in like the dude just wants to play the game and i'm constantly being like come on man let's just let's just do this easter egg please like i just want to really i want to do it man like it's my it's my child like curiosity and enthusiasm that also can kind of make me an unlikable character (laughs) but i think it's i think it's fine because i bounce off of jacob in a way that um um that is uh comedic but i did notice like as the season was going on and we we kept i kept having more episodes with me and jacob i was like the dynamic here is like i'm kind of a bad friend to jacob (laughs) but yeah i mean yeah like i'm kind of a bad friend to him like i had that epiphany and um as you see us progressively throughout in the season like our relationship i wouldn't say gets strained but like it gets pushed to its limits uh, to a point where like in episode eight, Jacob is just like shouting and fucking irate and, you know, just just um, out of pure anger. It's just like he's had enough, you know, Fine, whatever. Yes. That's why I kind of also um, these last three episodes, uh, in my opinion, like you can I, I, I made open lobby in a way so that you can watch any episode without really needing the context of the previous episode, like the se- the the season isn't um serialized it's meant to be more like a like a each episode is uh self-contained and isolated within its own means so you can watch it any episode in any order um but these last three episodes i sort of break that rule and i think these last three episodes are like a good like um companion piece um to uh i mean you could you could just say that episodes seven and eight are the ones that are tied together and then episode six is like another like one-off self-contained story but i i i link them together only because episode six reintroduces banshee right because we hadn't seen banshee since the pilot so episode six reintroduces banshee into the fold and it's like oh banshee is now the third member of this like um this trio you know, like now now it's a trio it's not a it's not a comedy duo anymore it's a trio right let's just get it over with So that that like small little moment there, I just didn't. Uh, I wanted to end the scene on a joke, but I didn't know. Um, like, so so I was like, okay, well, I want Jacob to shoot a guy in the beginning. So it's like, oh, we're in a multiplayer game, like we're in a free for all. So even though they're standing in the middle of the map, and somebody would have shot them while they're having that conversation, like like I just wanted to make it um, very clear to the audience that okay, they're in a they're playing of in a game in a match, right? So he kills the guy in the beginning, and then I was like, okay, well. To, I guess to close off the scene, um, they're going to leave the match. So I'll just have the guy that he killed run up into the scene and try to like sneak up behind him and kill him. And then they just disappear right when he does that. So um, and in, in the game, it actually wouldn't work that way. Uh, bodies wouldn't just dis- – like the players wouldn't just disappear. I'm pretty sure if you left the game, they would like um, – basically be like it would be like if they were to commit suicide their bodies would just fall to the ground um but here it disappears because it's it's funnier that way um but uh so the body the guy runs up and he and he as they like vanish in front of his eyes he like does like a double take and he just looks to the ground in like disappointment like oh man i i missed my opportunity to get the kill and then the dude just comes out of nowhere and i was like like that's not funny enough, you know. So I had the I had to have the guy come in and just call the other dude a bitch, <laughs> and, and like start to teabag him. Oh, what snipers, man! I hate this mode. It's bad enough. I gotta. Okay, I gotta mention just something here. Jacob, in after recording this episode, um, I think he I might have had him say that one line like, "Oh, what snipers." <laughs> 
<laughs> I might have had him say that uh, line like maybe 20 times when we were recording it because I don't know. It just like the way he was saying it every time wasn't like right. So I just needed some options to really choose from. Every, every time we've hung out since the recording this episode, he'll just say that out of the blue. And I <laughs> just fucking just to piss me off. And uh, I don't know why it pisses me off, but it's just like the fact that he's saying it just like and his like. I don't know. His delivery is just like, he's so annoyed. And for some reason it annoys me whenever he (laughs) says it to my face. It's like, it's like, Oh, you have shitty writing. It's like, fuck you. (laughs) Lead my shots with a fucking battle rifle, man. Sniping is so. So, um, yeah. Also part of Jacob's character is that he's, um, he cares a lot more about playing the game than Zach, obviously, because Zach just wants to, you know, look for Easter eggs, right? He just wants to fuck around. And um, Jacob just wants to actually play the game. He has, like, moderate skill. He's not, like, you know, he's not as skilled as, like, an elite level player, like an MLG guy, obviously. Um, And he's not as skilled as Banshee, but, you know, Banshee also uses hacks to be as good as he is. So, you know, it's kind of like, is Banshee really talented and skilled at the game, or is it just always the hacks, you know? In real life, um, I fucking dominate uh, in every, like, game that we've ever played in Halo. But, like... uh, for the purpose of this show, um, he, you know, he cares about being good, even though he's just like a moderate player, but he just, he's, he's all right. Whereas my, I, you don't really see me play the game in this, in this, um, uh, in this season really. But, um, I would say that my character is just like little less skilled than Jay. Like, this isn't fucking matter. Why am I saying this? <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Okay. That wasn't a sniper. So obviously that part where Jacob gets um, stung by the gets shot down by the laser here is obviously meant to like imply that wait well this isn't a regular this is a snipers only lobby what he said right um, clearly because they're both they both have snipers in hand they spawn with snipers so it must be a like a team snipers match or a sniper free for all whatever um, and then he gets shot by a laser so you meant to be like wait a second the fuck was that you know and then you know as the audience is questioning that zach is also questioning that and then right as he looks up here you get the shot of them just floating in midair and um chopper is like teleporting back and forth to dodge um the uh the shots of banshee right really like that shot just like the tracking of like the him like moving back and forth and you kind of track the camera's position um to where he's looking i probably did tr- did that shot like four or five times before i got it but i i like that shot and so so right here um like i said i i wanted to stick to like um just using the in-game like halo 3's like engine and not really using too many like I didn't want to use any, like, outside sources for, like, um, these visual effects, right? So I used... So all the visual effects are done, you know, through Halo 3's theater mode and, like, just maybe using the green screen. So first I was like, well, I could just use green screen and, like, you know, just have these guys floating in midair. But if you use green screen, if you key out any solid color, you're going to lose all this, like, transparent detail with, like, the bullet trail of the sniper tracing rounds, right? Or the sniper rounds. So... Um, what I did instead was just something that like is so easy to do. So Halo 3 is weird, um, where I don't know if you can do this in other Halo games too, but Halo 3, um, the way they used to make maps like, um, like Jenga and stuff like that, where, um, things can float in the air. Cause they didn't, they didn't allow fixed positions for like solid objects in Halo 3, like, um, where you can just have things floating in the air. They didn't allow you to do that until Halo Reach. So for three, people found a way around that where what you do is you um, place an object um, in Forge, right? You just, like a box or whatever. You place a box and then place a box on top of that box and then you delete the box underneath. And for some reason, the game's code um, still thinks that there's like something supporting it. So when you delete that box, it just floats. I don't know necessarily like the intricate like details in the code that like can explain that but essentially that's what i'm doing here so what i did was um as long as you don't move um in any direction you just stand still you stand completely still 
um, you can put a player on top of like an object um, in Forge and then delete it, and then they'll just float. They'll just stay right there. But if you move, then they'll drop, right? Um, so I just had Banshee and Chopper stand on something and then deleted it. Um, that way I could get these shots, right? It's a pretty simple effect, you know. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, when, when I when I when I thought of that, I was like, oh shit, this is like a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. It, it wouldn't even take too much like editing, you know. Any way I can save my time, or any way I can save myself some time with these edits is like awesome you know i because i i love editing but you know you always try to find like these ways that you can um make the process um more efficient and i love i love uh the chopper and banshee dynamic in this episode i mean it's supposed to be like a sort of yin, yin and yang where it's like they balance each other out and then like neither of them can sort of um uh, best the other one in like in terms of uh, modding because like ba or, uh, Chopper basically in this episode has all of like the mods that will counter Banshee's attacks right and it's so much in Chopper knows Banshee like in terms of like like he can just think how he thinks as a modder right uh, and so he can even anticipate his attacks that's why you see him like dodging the the sniper bullets as he's moving in that direction to shoot him uh, I just really like that. It's it's this whole episode is meant to be um, comedic and ridiculous, but it adds a sense of like tension between the characters, right? Like a, a sort of like suspense um, for Banshee because he's like he's trying to um, figure out how he can beat this guy, you know. classic like anime um just like entrance you know fall from the sky you get like multiple shots with the with like a like a drum or something you know boom 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 cut to cut to cut to different angles as um as the the bass hits and then you get the little like slide like the shimmer on the visor um just a just a fun like little gag there yo banshee what was that what are you? You are floating in midair. Oh, yeah, that's just a glitch. A glitch? Yeah, a glitch. That's one hell of a glitch. What about the laser? The laser? Yeah, the laser that spawn killed me. I thought this lobby was snipers only. It is. <laughs> so where did that laser come from? I don't know. I just saw something that looks like a laser. What the fuck? No! I know what I saw. It was a fucking laser. Zach saw it too. Actually, I don't really know what I saw. Maybe it wasn't a laser. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, I'm just saying, it wouldn't make much sense. We're in a sniper's only lobby. Maybe the issue's on our end? Like a screen tear or something? Are you blind? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and yeah, this, this little part here is funny too, but um, uh, uh, <laughs> but I just, I just love how they're just like gaslighting him. <laughs> like Banshee, Banshee in this episode or in this scene is aware that they're mods because obviously he's modding, right? So he's aware that this is a modded lobby and this isn't a regular sniper or only lobby. So he's gaslighting Jacob, uh, into thinking that it is just like a normal lobby, you know? And, uh, and Zach is like, so naive <laughs> to the idea um, that Banshee could be modding or that they're even in a modded lobby. So Zach is genuinely like confused. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, this is, this is just a regular snipers only lobby. Banshee's just that good. <laughs> like, again, it's like his, his naivete um, is like, uh, <laughs> like a, a flaw in his character um, that also sort of makes him a bad friend. <laughs> But it's funny, because Jacob reacts in such, like, a hilariously aggressive and, like, argumentative way every time. It's only a fucking energy sword! Yeah, and I liked, I liked this shot, too. Like, the, you cut from this, like, uh, this, like, medium 
on Jacob and then right to when he says he's holding an energy sword, you know, you cut to this, um, I guess like a, a full shot of Zach and Jacob and then you just see the energy sword in the left. Uh, I thought that was a really like funny cut to like, um, you know, comedic reveal. Oh shit. Behind you. Oh shit. Here we go. So actually real quick, I should probably break this down. So, You've seen me do it before, Um, like the, you know, I I, I cut, I do like really quick cuts on action to sort of emphasize and slow down a moment. Um, That way it's not just like, because if I didn't cut the, uh, to like these three different shots of like him firing the laser, um, then you wouldn't really get a sense of like what's actually happening. So you get a few shots of that and then you get this quick shot here, if I can get it. Right there. So you get a quick shot of Banshee like turning to face the laser. And um and so that's um that was one this is one of the sequences that I had in my head um writing this episode. I was like, I want this specific like all the all the shots for this like anime sequence that's about to happen was all like in my head in the script. Like it was all there in the script um as I was writing it. And this shot specifically that's about to come up where he's like holding the the sword and there's like smoke coming off it. Like that was one of those shots that was like, oh, that's such like a nice reveal and like transition into this like um, ridiculous uh, anime parody um, that I was like, that's that's great. So we're about to see that. And I had a lot of fun with this. Oh my God. So for that shot where the the sword is like that, right? You, that doesn't happen in game. So what I did was I just um, took a green screen element of the sword and just overlaid that on top and then keyed out the green, obviously. And all this is also green screen, obviously, because they're all in like just a black box. Um, so they're also on a green screen, but I had the overlay of the sword um, there as well um, to... Uh, so that I could get that shot and have it like blocking his face, so it could be like very anime, and he pulls it back as he says, as he says his line, you know, and you see the smoke dissipate. Uh, it's a fun shot. Really happy with how this whole episode turned out. I'm, I'm just really proud of this episode. Yeah, so there, obviously, share the same secret, you know, because it's the the whole point of this episode. It wasn't meant to be explicitly said that they're modding, right? But it's it's clearly evident based on Jacob's like what Jacob is saying that they're just they're modders of the game. Um, but you know the whole joke at the very end is that Jacob is, or Zach is still not aware that Banshee is a hacker, right? Um, or a modder. Um, and so, uh, and you can even see here, like, like the, the fact that they're like the same and balanced, like a uh, chopper is literally like the inverted colors of Banshee. He's white and blue, whereas Banshee is, um, red and black, you know? So it's just, they're a perfect, like, um, inverted reflection of each other. And that's meant to be reinforced in this fight that's about to happen. And and also like the you know um but you, you while they are see so the again the ridiculousness is that they are both like kids they're both like you know, nine, nine or eight years old. Right. And they're, they're also weebs, you know, they, <laughs> they, they just love, they love, you know, um, Japanese animation so much that like they're bleeding it into their, um, the way they play this game. So they have like the, they have the Hayabusa armor and they're using energy swords as if it's like, you know, um, samurai blades and like samurai armor, you know? And, um, but even like the, the voice actors that are doing this, um, which, you know, they did a tremendous job. Uh, I got, I, I found them on Fiverr. Um, 
they did a tremendous job with this but the dialogue is all like what these kids would be saying like where banshee is like and there's no chance in heck that you'll beat me no that's like what a kid would say because a kid a kid would probably he would maybe say hell like there's no chance in hell you'll beat me but you know maybe he's like playing in the same room as his like parents so he wants to you know you know he's probably got told off by his parents a couple of times to say don't say any bad words right so it's just like to enforce the innocence of of these uh, of these characters right to, to even though they're being portrayed by um men probably double or triple their age um with these really deep japanese voices um really deep and eccentric japanese voices um they're still children right i just i just think it's i just think it's so fu- it's so fucking dumb right but I think it's so funny that these, like, kids, like, immediately when they get into this, like, mode, it switches. And they just, um, right when they get into this fight, they're immediately, like, um, portrayed as, like, j- um, Japanese anime protagonists and antagonists. It's just so fucking, I love this episode so much. <laughs> so these shots, they're actually not um, done... Uh, practically, I used green screen. So the the shots of Banshee and Chopper running, those are green screen plates. Those are green screen elements. And then uh, and then I have a plate in the background of just them running. Um, and I just have like the camera um, on like the maximum f FOV. Um, so that way it gives it like a sort of speed um, as they're running up. And uh, the reason why I did that is just because with how stretched out the FOV is, um, and with how little of the space they would be moving, it would go by too quick. And again, I want to slow down this moment. So, cause like in reality, they would step like four feet and they would immediately be within range of each other. I just wanted to slow down the moment. Cause that's also what, um, a lot of animes do, you know, um, they just slow down the one specific moment, um, to heighten a certain action. And so that's what I was trying to do here. But I think it, I think it goes by t- fast enough that you don't really notice that it's all on a green screen. And now, now all this is the rest of this stuff. Like with all the modding and stuff, is all um, practical done in game with the, with the actual mods, right? So that shot there is the only shot in this scene that isn't practical. I'm pretty sure. Um, so how I got this shot was again, it's just more green screen stuff because um, that's all I was using for like special effects. Was just I used what I could get in terms of mods. And then, like, if I needed to get, like, a specific shot, I would just use green screen and do my best with that and try to use my creativity to um, make the shot that I wanted in my head come to life, you know. So this one, um, I just literally shot a rocket uh, against a green screen. And then in theater mode, I just, like, moved my camera around a little bit in, like, a shaking motion to give the to have the rockets move in this shot. And then I just got a bunch of different angles so that, like... I could have like all these rockets like circling. It's it's another like very like stylistic. I don't want to keep saying anime shot, but it's like it's a very stylistic shot. Um, you know, with him in the dead center and the rockets are like surrounding him, honing in as they get closer. You know, um, it's just something that you would see in a cartoon. You know. Hmm. Yeah, and that's a nice like push in there. And so then like you know. He's shooting, it's it's not apparent because the shots don't really visualize it clearly, but so in the game, I don't even know if this is possible, but I, I remember seeing this in a Master Chief War <laughs> thing when I was a kid. I watched the machinima called Master Chief War, and um, and that's where I got this idea from, uh, where like you, because uh, in the machinima, he shoots like a sniper round through a rocket and he makes the rocket explode. So for this scene, He's just shooting all this, all, all the rockets that are being fired at him with sniper rounds to just nullify them so they they don't blow him up. So it's another, you know, it's one of his ways that he was able to cancel out Banshee's attack here. And so, yeah, obviously, um, yeah, so all the mods here, it's, it's like it's done through alpha halo or halo alpha or whatever in the mod tool you can just set the projectiles of any weapon that you want to like the projectiles of any other weapon in game and then you would just apply that effect in game and you could change the the projectile rounds so you know 
for for these plasma pistols, I just or plasma rifles, I would just change the projectile to um, like like banshee bombs or scarab gun, and then you know then it shoots off like the the legendary Halo Two scarab gun, right? Uh, same thing for the assault rifle. You know, I just change the projectiles from the assault rifle rounds to rocket launcher, right? I'm not a modder, okay? I'm just the guy that looked up tutorials on how to do this stuff for this episode, okay? So don't take my word as libel or, or Bible, right? This sequence was tricky here. This little, like, series of shots here was tricky to shoot because um, my character was just... The characters were just moving so fast and all the action was happening so fast. I tried to get as, as clear of coverage as I possibly could, but it was a struggle. You can see because I'm cutting like to multiple angles just to try to get this one sequence in. But um, but yeah, so Jacob is piloting Chopper and I'm piloting Banshee. And so this shot, Banshee just jumps off of like a stool that's floating in, it, in the midair. And then he's flying off in that direction, right? To sort of like swerve around him. Um, and then in this shot here... It's sort of like an over-the-shoulder shot. Um, yeah, right there. It, it's, it goes by really quick again because like I, the action was moving by so quick, I tried to get the best coverage that I could. But um, there, it, again, it goes by so fucking fast. But um, here, I just actually have Banshee running along like a track that I built made out of um, uh, wooden pallets in the game that I just had floating on. Uh, floating in air, in the midair, and then I just had him run along that track, um, so that I could get this like stable, so I could have Banshee at least consistently level in the frame, as if he was like gliding in in the sky, um, so I could get this sh over the shoulder like overhead shot. And then I guess to break it down simply, like to explain how I do that, like. Um, that like instant transmission or teleporting effect, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's, I don't know what you would call it exactly. Um, I was a DBZ kid uh, <laughs> for like those shots where they're like teleporting and like reappearing. All that is, is just, um, I get a shot of like a, just a, a, a clean plate uh, with no actor or avatar or, you know, body in the scene. Um, and then it, from the same angle, I don't move the camera. I get the shot where, um, Chopper or Banshee or whoever um, is in the frame um, and they jump into frame and then I just I do a mat around them right and then I just uh, apply a motion blur effect in Premiere um, and then I just I also like keyframe I keyframed the um, uh, the mat like to move to jitter and move like up and down like a couple of frames before completely removing them from the frame and that just gives it, like, some energy to be, like, oh, they're, like, phasing, and then they just teleport, and they're gone, right? It just, that little extra touch with, like, the moving of the keyframes just gives it a bit of, um, a bit more energy than it would be to just be, like, to, to have a, a motion blur effect and then just to be gone. It just wouldn't look right, um, to the naked eye. like that part two where it's like it cools it dies down he teleports he doesn't know where he is so the music cuts out and it's like and you just hear the amp the map ambience and it's like where'd he go um well i guess it's over and then bam right in his face right and then you get the you i love this shot too you get the quick cut to like this push in on a close-up and then you hear the energy sword blade um, strike and you get this like quick like tracking shot where he's like whipping it out and then immediate clash. Wasting no time here. So this is like the only like phony part uh, because um, again, it goes by so quick that I'm hoping that the audience won't see all the flaws in it. But um, basically, again, I had them like elevating on wooden pallets because I only have me and one other person in the scene right so I can't and I wanted them to like clash and then run off right to like because if because if they just clash they wouldn't really bounce so I wanted them to clash and then bounce back and then teleport I don't know just like to give it again more like energy and like that each strike is like powerful right 
And so I had them just like, they would clash and then walk off these wooden pallets. But because of the angle of this shot and the, uh, how many pallets I had in the frame on different levels, some of the pallet shots, you can kind of like see the inconsistencies. If you slow it down, like right there, their feet are like nowhere to be found and they're completely gone. And then they, they clash and then you Banshee for like a, for like a frame, his foot disappears when they, when they both fall. Um, and then you get the, <clears throat> the teleporting effect. And then there, it's like, there's like a, there's like a, a matte, like, feathering effect around both of them because, um, you know, I'm using this clean plate here, but the clean plate is inconsistent with, um, all this other stuff going on because when I got this clean plate, this is before I, um, I got coverage of all the action. And then as I got coverage of all the action, action, the map ambience, like the, the, the fog and the distance, like it moves up and down. And so it's like, it's hard to be consistent like that. So I just did my best to, um, you know, do, feather it enough to where it wouldn't be too noticeable. Um, and then have the moments last like within a few frames. So, you know, even if you did notice it, it wouldn't be too big of a deal. But again, I could just be overthinking it, um, because I'm like, and, and overanalyzing it because I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff. Like if I see a flaw in like anything that I do, I just rip it apart and I'm like, I'm so stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I just like this shot cause I've seen shots like this in anime before where, you know, they just lock off one shot and then you see them like teleporting throughout the screen multiple times until they get like close to the camera and then, um, and they clash and then it cuts to another shot, right? That's what I was doing here. Now they're doing this standoff here and um, before they do like a final strike and then like a big explosion happens, right? So this specific part, I took inspiration from the fight uh, between Goku and Frieza in the Namek saga, right? It, it's their first time that they clash, right? Like right after uh, Vegeta is killed by Frieza, right? Um, they clash on like this, on like... Um, <laughs> they clash right next to the feet. Like, Goku fucking buries him. <laughs> Isn't that fucking crazy? I don't remember that shit as a kid. I watched it recently. Um, Goku fucking uh, just buries Vegeta in the middle of, like, battle. Right before he's about to fight Frieza. He's just like, Frieza kills him. And then he's like, he's like, Vegeta, you're a good guy. You You changed and I'm... I'm proud of you or whatever. <laughs> it's like, it's like he buries him and like puts a fucking flower on his grave or some shit. I was like, holy fuck. Like, this is crazy. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, um, if you watch that, the first, the beginnings of that, um, Goku versus Frieza fight and then, and watch this, you can see a lot of similarities. Like there's the shot where, um, it, it's like a close up, um, it's a close up push in slow push and move in on a uh, banshee's face um and then um and then it cuts like quickly to a a push in on chopper's face and then it cuts to like three sh different shots of banshee's like foot launching off the ground and that's ex that's pretty much practically identical to how the fight starts with um goku and frieza uh so yeah just a little uh nerd gush there i'm not a weeb i swear i just was a dbz kid okay I don't know if it's obvious also, but I'll just point it out. Um, so all the, all the like, um, the screaming and like the panting and like the breathing and, um, and like the little like, oh, that's all me. <laughs> so, Cause, um, I only, uh, when these guys recorded, uh, their dialogue for me, they only recorded what I had in the script and I didn't have like, I didn't have like all these extra little like 
beats where like the characters are meant to like you know um do like a little like j- anime like ooh, ooh, like all that stuff that they do <laughs> i i didn't have that in the script because i didn't know where, where i wanted to put it yet um so in editing i added all that stuff in because i was like well i need that right um so then that part where they like rushing towards each other and they're about to clash the two screams you hear that's me and uh and i fucking i've never in like all my years of making shit i have never like um like almost like lost my voice um except in that recording that recording was like i strained the fuck out of my vocal cords and i was like okay shit i think i was like i want to do one more take but i don't think i can so i'm just going to have to stick with what i got and uh, i mean i think it's fine but yeah holy shit that was uh that was straining on my vocal cords for sure <laughs>。This is a classic like anime moment. <laughs> or it's like <laughs> we are equally matched. You can't beat me. You know, it's like, and then you get this like wide shots. You get these like, s- like ridiculous, like um, over the top dramatic shots, right? With this, this wide shot here and this, uh, and then before that you get this like, this like long push in and then this over the shoulder shot. Like it's just so over the top and dramatic, but that's anime and that's why we all love it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this moment. I'm so happy. Like, again, like, I, before even, because I've never, I've never made something. Like, it's, it's really hard for me to write something and come up with an idea in my head and then to fully realize it when I go to make it. Because it, there's always, like, things that I have to compromise for. Um, and, um, and I guess with this, I had to compromise because initially I wanted to do like elaborate animations, but I think it all, I think it just works better doing it all in engine, like, uh, just using the Halo 3 engine because, um, it gives a sense of like authenticity to it. And it would, again, it wouldn't really make sense if I just went balls to the wall with the animation because the show isn't like Red versus Blue where it's taking place like in its own universe it's taking place in real life over xbox live right so it wouldn't make any sense to um to do that right and go all elaborate with the animated i mean i guess you could you could sort of be like well it's it's what the characters banshee and chopper in their heads in their minds are like that's how they see themselves doing this shit they see themselves as like these awesome anime characters and then but the thing is to counteract that you would just have to have like these shots like comedic cut to moments of Zach and Jacob watching the battle as it goes on. It's just like shot from very far away and um, not shot in with any grace or any, um, you know, anime style. It's just shot plainly and you see them like, you know, just shooting each other and bouncing around the map. But uh, I was just like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I, I think I, I just, I think I did really well with this episode. I'm, I'm a big fan of this episode and I'm a big fan of this moment because I wrote this specifically in mind and every shot in this scene is what I had pictured in my head when I was writing it. And, um, and if you can do that, uh, when you're, uh, when you're writing something or when you're trying to make something as a filmmaker and tell your story, that's an awesome fucking feeling. So real quick, I'll just break it down. So the only shots in this scene, like all the other, all the shots in this scene are done uh, practically within like just the vanilla Halo 3, right? The only um, things that weren't were this shot here. Um, this shot here, I got, um, you know, a plate of just the icicle falling, a clean plate, and that was it of the icicle falling. And then I just had... Uh, Chopper and Banshee on a green screen. Chopper jumping up and Banshee falling down um, to get this shot here. 
and then I just slowed it down in editing. Um, and then this shot, this whole shot, the clean plate is of Banshee um, jumping. Uh, so it's a bit of a complicated shot than it looks. So Banshee, because um, so the reason why I didn't just because you can do this in the game, you can jump on an icicle on this map because uh, icicles are like physical objects that you can jump on. A lot of pro pro players do this trick, right? So that's also why it's kind of like is Banshee skilled just uh, you know because of the hacks and mods that he has? Because I mean he's able to do the this highly skillful you know trick like jumping on the icicle. So you know it's kind of like. Is, he's probably good, but he's using hacks for whatever reason also. Um, but anyway, I'm not that good at Halo. I'm a pretty good player, but I'm not that good. I mean, I bet if I trained for like a whole fucking day on getting this icicle trick shot thing, I could probably do it. But I tried like so many times to get this um, through like multiple days trying it, and I just couldn't fucking do it. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just find a way to do it in editing in post, right? Fuck it, we'll do it in post. <laughs> so, uh, the shot, the clean plate, is just Banshee, and he's jumping onto, like, a, um, he's jumping off of a, like, box. Again, like a box that's just floating in air, right? And, um, and so then I just matted out the box, right? I cut a mat out, um, and so the box doesn't exist in the frame anymore. Um, and then the icicle is another, like, thing that I just cut out in Photoshop and then place it in the scene so I could um, just make, I basically constructed this moment artificially to get it the most precise shot that I wanted because I'm like, I'm fucking David Fincher here. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, so, um, so that's how I did this shot. Um, yeah, a lot more complicated than it looks, I guess. And then, so when it breaks here, when it breaks, I just fade out, cause it, cause when you do step on the icicle in the in the game, it you'll break it and it'll have this like particle effect of the ice like shattering. So, um, how I did this was I just faded out the icicle for like um, a quarter of a second, right, and then it fades in this um, this particle effect that I just found on YouTube, um, and then I colored it correctly to match the coloring of how it would look in game. Um, and then I just, uh, put it in the scene again. It's a lot more complicated than it looks, but I think it did the trick. And then this shot is also green screen. Cause again, I wanted like the, a precise shot. If I would have got this practically, um, he would be falling already. Um, and I, I wouldn't get him at the, at the peak of his, of his jump. Uh, so I, I, um, and I wanted as much control of these sh of this um, moment as possible. So I just shot him on a green screen and then, um, you know, uh, got a clean plate at the background and matched up as best as I could. And again, I think it looks great. Uh -oh. So that shot here, when he's falling in this shot, that's green screen. Because uh, again, I, I wanted control complete control over how this shot was going to look. So I got the green screen here. But that that is practical. This shot here is practical, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know why, but that sound gets me every fucking time I <laughs> I every time I was editing this, like the whole time I was editing this when I was rewatching this to try to make sure there were no fucking errors or anything like that. It, it got me every time because I don't know why that sound is just so, <laughs> so perfect for that moment. And so dumb. Um, so I, I downloaded like a sound pack of like a bunch of anime sounds for this, um, like Dragon Ball Z sounds and whatever, but that specific sound, I think you can find it on YouTube is where I found it. It was, um, I think it's called like anime epic fail or something and it's just like that sound and i was like oh my god i have to fucking use that that is fucking perfect uh it's just so dumb dude, dude that was sick how'd you do that oh it's nothing just a pro tip i learned no i mean how'd you guys do that stuff like like with the guns really you still don't know it's obvious the kid is hacking Oh, come on! 
So, yep. Uh, initially, it was just going to cut to the um, the thing that I've been doing all season, which was just like the Team Kill Tacular logo, and it goes Team Kill Tacular, right? Um, but I felt like nece- I felt it was necessary to include credits for this, not only because um, it's an it's an anime episode, so I wanted to have like an anime closer with some like anime style credits. I uh, I also wanted to credit um, everything that I used in this episode, like the music that I had in here. Um, and also, obviously, the, the voice actors, because they did a great job, and I really wanted to credit them properly. Um, and then, yeah, after this, I stuck to doing credits, because um, the reason why I didn't do credits initially was because I was just going to do one big credit se- uh, sequence uh, at the end of the finale, uh, and have, like, credits for all the episodes. But I was like, no, I'll just do individual credits, because, I don't know, something about it, it it's just more, um, I guess, professional, in a sense. Um, and not to not to say that, like, this is professionally done but i don't know i just i felt it i felt it uh necessary to start doing credits um in this way that i'm doing it i really like the end credits for this episode specifically i like i like the music i chose here yeah so that so these are the the tracks that i used here uh yeah oh okay yeah the naruto a naruto track all right (laughs) and then this is the uh the one track at the bottom was um was this track here for the credits <laughs> so uh i spelled fiverr wrong i thought there were two v's turns out um it's it's one v but two r's i i i'm dyslexic <laughs> and also i have my mom credited here <laughs> because um uh to make this um to make this series i uh i'm using my mom, I, 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 I borrowed, uh, my mother's TV as well as my TV. So I have, so I could set up the two consoles, right? Oh my goodness. It's so kawaii. <laughs> that was episode six. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I like, I mean, I was just practically gushing about this whole thing the whole time. Um, I love this episode so much. It is it, like, by far my favorite of the season. I mean, I like these last like three episodes a lot that I did, um, but I think I think I like episodes seven and eight um, specifically because it's like it's finally getting into like the story that I want to tell that'll that goes into season two. That's gonna expand on everything. Um, but um, no, I liked I liked episode six because it was just like it was just something that I threw together just for complete fun, right? Because this whole season was just I was just meant to have. I wanted to have fun with everything that I was doing. Episode six specifically, it was like I already had all the episodes uh, were all the episodes were already out, released, or in the middle of production. So I was like, ah, "Fuck it, let me just throw something in there. Just let me let me spit on a page for like an hour and see what I can put together." And I came up with like a draft for that episode, and I was really happy with it. And I think it turned out great. I think um, uh, a lot of people. Um, so that they really liked it and that they, um, they, they liked how weird it was. And, um, I'm happy to hear that. So yeah, that was, uh, the director's commentary for open lobby season one, episode six ranked lobby. Thanks for watching.